Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's Lenten devotional. Uh, today I'll be reading from Psalm 130, and, and I, I want you to hear the words, especially these opening words, uh, out of the depths my soul cried to you. And, and so I, as you think about that, I, I invite you to think about those moments, those experiences in your life when you've heard me refer to as the yogurt hitting the fan or, or the sense that you've been in this place of deep despair, um, perhaps even flirting uh, with, de- uh, with depression uh, and uncertainty. And so uh, let, let's uh, let the psalmist speak to us, and then I'll, I'll speak uh, a little with that as well. So uh, the psalmist writes, Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, so that we can with reverence serve you. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in his word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord. More than a watchman waits for the morning, more than the watchman waits for the morning. Israel, put your hope in the Lord. For with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. For he himself will redeem Israel from all their sins. It's most likely that David is the psalmist that's writing this psalm, and most likely it's uh, following you know, his, his fall uh, with Bathsheba and the murder of Uriah, one of his most trusted servants. It's most likely a part of the cry, um, you know, that we read in Psalm 51, uh, you know, search my heart uh, kind of experience. And the opening line of today's devotional reading, out of the depths of my heart, out of the depths of my soul, I, I cry to you, God, reminds me of a story that I shared uh not too long ago. Uh, it was about a man who had fallen in a hole, and, and while he was down in this hole, uh, he had no one to rescue him. Uh, you know, and I talked about certain individuals that had come along uh, who had offered help from up top, but then there was one man who actually jumped into the hole uh, with him. And the reason he was there, he was able to show him the way out because he had himself been in that hole at one time. Um, So out of the depths of of the psalmist's heart uh, is this cry of someone who has been in a hole, right? He's able to say out of the depths because he once was there. Uh, It's written, so when he writes the psalm, it's written by someone who has been in the hole, and now it's a a psalm of thanksgiving, but it's also uh, a psalm that is written for those who are still stuck in the hole. It's a, a psalm that's meant to be words of encouragement and words of hope for those uh, who are experiencing pain in those deep, dark places of life. And the psalmist believed, uh, when, when the psalmist, uh, you know, if it's David, wrote, uh, when he wrote that psalm, uh, he believed that he was the uh, he was the reason for the hole in the first place. That it was that it was his choices and his actions uh, that caused the consequences of of the deep despair that he was feeling. And uh, maybe you have situations in your life where you feel like uh, the the pain uh, that you're receiving uh, is because of the choices that you've made. You've probably have said before you've you've made your bed now lie in it. Uh, and and that's a place. If, but if we're not careful uh, about about our mindset in the midst of the holes that we're responsible for, uh, those holes can become graves. Uh, they can become places where we literally find ourselves dead to self uh, in that context. And and so the psalmist recognizes. Uh, that he's in a vulnerable place, and that's what leads him to to say uh, that the consequences of his choice. What would they be if if God, you kept a record of all the the wrongdoings? But he's he's crying out to God and asking for God to be merciful. That God will not keep uh, a record of the wrongdoing. And then we read the words that he's waiting. He's waiting for God's response. That he knows the news will come, but he's still waiting. We, my friends, are on the end of already knowing uh, God's response. 
Uh, God has said that I love the world so much that I sent my only begotten Son, not to condemn the world, but so that the world might have life, that uh, I have come to save the world. My friends, my hope for you today is if you find yourself in that, in that dark hole, if you find yourself in that place of, of pain and darkness, that you would hear the good news uh, that, God lo- that God loves you. That God does not keep a record of wrongs, but instead offers to you the gift of new life. And if you are a person who has climbed out of the hole, you have experienced God's love, God's grace, and God's forgiveness, I, I would encourage you today to be in prayer for those who are in those deep, dark places, that God might send you uh, to walk with them, and that you uh, might be a light uh, for people who are in those places. Will you pray with me? Father, I thank you for your mercy and for your grace. I thank you that as we continue our journey towards the cross, uh, we will see uh, the power of your love demonstrated in the words and your actions of forgiveness. May we be a people who walk as forgiven people today, and may we be a people who are willing to offer light to those who feel stuck in deep, dark holes. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So my friends, thank you for letting me be with you for a few moments this morning. I hope you have a wonderful day, and I look forward to uh, meeting with you again tomorrow morning. Till then, uh, be good, be blessed, and I'll see you around.